Hey, hello everyone. Uh, welcome to a new NCAP species guide. Today we're going to be talking about uh, an ant species that's called Formica cinerea. I actually have a small colony of these shiny Formica ants. Uh, they are, as of yet, a very young colony, so there's not a lot of footage to take to put in this video, but there will be a little bit, as much as I can. And, and so this will be one of those where I have actually actual footage of the ants that I'm talking about. So uh, stay tuned to the end, it's probably, it's probably going to be a little bit more entertaining than most of my uh, ant care species guide videos. So for starters, these ants come from all over Europe except for the UK for some reason. They also exist in some parts of Asia, both south and north to the west, uh, right in, uh, near uh, Europe of course, like for example Russia, and even some countries in the Middle East. This information is obviously according to ant maps, which I find to be the most reliable source of information about these things, as well as, you know, checking with uh, a bunch of other sites and papers or whatever. Uh, also, according to ant maps and according to some observations in well done by biologists, they seem to maybe exist in places like Madagascar and the west of the USA. This is obviously not something that is, you know, confirmed and registered. They're not technically considered an invasive species anywhere. So, since they hail from this uh, very temperate part of the world, uh, naturally, uh, with, and by which I mean Europe, the climate that they prefer is something along those lines uh, of, you know, not a lot of humidity, not a lot of temperature. That's where they'll thrive. So, I'll give you some numbers, as always. Check the description for how to create gradients for your ants. I've done videos on that and it's uh, very important when you're an ant keeper to know how to do that and let your ants regulate their climate for themselves. So when it comes to uh, humidity, you should keep them between 30% and 60%. Obviously, 50% is the sweet spot for almost everything in the world. Uh, you, as a human, uh, would be best at 50% uh, humidity. It helps all your respiratory system work the best so if you have your ant room too dry and you spend a lot of time in there you yourself are going to feel a little, a little uh, bad you're not going to like it that much it's like when you're in the desert or something it's it's not great the air is dry and you you can tell so in interest of uh, first of all comfort of yourself and also the fact that most households are at around 50 percent humidity you should keep these ants at 50% humidity because they will thrive at that and it's the easiest and most convenient way for almost any human to do it. When it comes to temperature, they can live very well between 20 and almost 30 degrees Celsius. The thing is that they are, despite where they come from not being a place that's very warm, they are quite th thermophil, so when they can, they will try to put their brood and themselves as hot as they can, you know, not going too hot, right? So they will really prioritize a search for uh, warmth, right? They like to live in sandy areas and they'll try to make their nests dome-shaped and to capture the, su the, the sun warmth and, you know, when it isn't hot enough, like when it is in summer and when they are also not hibernating, because they do hibernate. So, the sweet spot for them, I am beginning to find very precisely with the ants that I have I have my entry between 25 and 27 degrees Celsius and that seems to work just fine for them. According to the numbers I found online, that should be also the perfect uh, area of temperature where you would want to keep them. So I mentioned hibernation. They hibernate from the end of October to the end of March. They do so according to the internet at between 5 and 8 degrees Celsius. I do not hibernate my ants because I don't really have the conditions to do so. Uh, but if you want to, I have made a video on how you can do that. Uh, the best ways and the all that you need and all that you could have to do that it's a very in-depth video despite it being very old in my channel and i will probably remake it at some point but it will it will also be in the description so if you want to hibernate them you can now let's move on to numbers when it comes to sizes right so first of all the size of the ants themselves the queen is usually around 12 millimeters which is quite big for formica the workers uh, slight poly slightly polymorphic, very, very slightly. There's not exactly cast, they don't change in the morphology, you know, the, the proportions of their body doesn't change, there are no soldiers or workers, they're just, you know, slightly bigger ants, slightly smaller ants. 
and they they range from six to eight millimeters give or take so that's fun and one of the things that's fun about them being so big well they're not too big but they're big enough to, where you can really appreciate them even with the naked eye is that they're very shiny they are black but they have a coat of velvety like you know shimmering and it's uh, it's where they get the the name scenario because it sort of shimmers in i guess goldish silver uh, I, it's, it's really hard to explain and i don't know if i can capture it good on film but they do really look very very pretty in a in a in an odd kind of way it's it's very cool to watch them actually so once again numbers they are polygynous they can have many queens uh, and they being formica usually that they, they they can have you know most formica species do not have uh, hundreds of queens but they can have a good few of them and it's usually either they start a colony together or eventually they bud colonies and stuff like that so they're very flexible with uh, having and utilizing the queens that they have. My colony has one uh, and they can grow up to 10,000 workers with enough queens to sustain that. Mine probably won't and I also don't want them to because they are very active, they export a lot and they <laughs> occupy a lot of space. So 10,000 of them would be hard work. And uh, yeah, as I've mentioned, they occupy a lot of space and that is because they are, first of all, they're very active ants. They even my small colony, which has like five or six workers, they come out two at a time, sometimes to look for food. They, they bring massive uh, pieces of mealworm inside the nest and they're very cool to watch even at these small numbers. They're also very visual. They don't exactly, you know, see you and look at you or something like that, but they, they really see things instead of filling them with their antennae, which if you keep a lot of different ants, you'll notice that some ants see better than others and some, you know, some will have to touch things with their antennae to actually notice them. Others will ha will be able to see them at certain dif uh, certain distances and this uh, these ants in particular can see at quite the far distance for an ant, obviously. Uh, so that's the, it means that they have very cool behaviors. In the wild, they hunt in sort of small groups and they take down very big... Um, very big insects or other types of very small but for them very big prey they can they can take down the biggest of insects in their areas because they are a, a force to be reckoned with first of all they work uh, very well together because of the visual side of the hunting strategy and they also utilize formic acid for a lot of things one of them being hunting which is a very powerful tool in the ants arsenal they also utilize that acid to clean their nest and do you know maintain a sterile environment so when you have them in a very very small and compact setup they will maybe use too much acid and since they aren't exactly in dirt which absorbs the the excess they could kill themselves by using too much acid that's why they are in my case in a white on nest which is very porous and can let the acid escape i think and they are also in a very big nest for the colony size that they have because I don't want to risk them sort of fumigating themselves. So I should mention, just as a light point, as a last point, what they usually like to eat. They really enjoy hunting, and I can see that even in the small colony that I have. And so they are very carnivorous, but they also enjoy a lot of sweets, fruits, so as a general rule, give them a big variety of omnivorous th things you give to ants, just not seeds, they don't really eat seeds, but fruits, sweets like sugar and sugary solutions, um, stuff like, you know, uh, honeydew, if you can get your hands on it, they love them, usually in the wild they can, uh, milk aphids for honeydew, and also their protein source, it can be insects or anything else. Ants really eat almost anything, as long as they can get to the actual nutrients that the, the food item contains. And these are no exception. So that is all you need to know about them. They are a very interesting little Formica species. Formica is a, a very big genus, a very vast and very interesting genus, which I uh, really underappreciated until a few months ago when I started to really search them because I started to notice of a lot of uh, ants of that genre around the place where I live. And uh, yeah, they're, they're very 
they're amazing and I, I got my hands on from a casinaria which will be a blast to have in the future and I hope to actually come to make videos about them about this colony alone by their own I hope that they get to a size where they have they, they produce content for me so because that's a good sign that means they're thriving so that that is all I'll see you in the next one bye bye